Hey, you guys, it's Jim. So I'm sitting right here with a guy that you may see a lot when you walk into the place. This is Tom Scanlon. And Tom is the guy that is responsible for mixing basically every show that we do here on the Broadway series. And we're sitting right here at your soundboard. So, Tom, dude, first of all, congratulations. It's an amazing show. Thank you. And every single person and critic talks about how great the, it sounds, how clear it is. You know, and, and that's a dedication to you because that's your job, man. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about it. We're sitting at the board. Um, and what exactly is your title and what's that mean as far as responsibilities? Uh, I'm the head of audio, which means I pretty much I mix the shows. Uh, and I'm also in charge of uh, making sure that the system's all ready and set. And uh, I help tell the other sound guy who's backstage, the technician who uh, manages all the microphones, I kind of give him tips from inside things that I've done over the years. And so make sure what kind of tips good. would you give the dude who's working on the mics backstage? At this point, not much, because he's, he's picked up on all of my little little tricks. But what are a couple of the little tricks you guys oh, would uh, use back there? The microphones, like uh, how to rig them to go on people's ears and uh, how to just do little things that designers that I've worked with over the years have uh, taught me. They're all I'm insider things. I'm always surprised that mics don't burn out more because when you get up there, they're sweating and they're moving, yeah. especially like a cat's where it's nonstop. Yeah, that's one and of even, my tricks is yeah. I know how to keep them, keep them pretty resilient. I uh, have some tanks that I can put together is one term that I use, but it's to help sweat proof them and uh, make them very resilient to the day-to-day -day wear and tear. Cool. So when we're sitting at this board, you literally are responsible for the sound of every single person who has a microphone, right? Which is everyone, yeah. And also the band. Yes. And bring it all together to mm -hmm. make it one amazing sound yeah. so uh, everybody can fully enjoy what these guys are doing on it. Sound effects as well and... Uh, yeah, line by line. If someone's not scripted or they're not making a sound that is relevant to the show, their mic isn't on. So every single person, line by line. Uh, in a show like Tommy, where it's all sung through, yeah, it's a lot more, you know, this person has this song kind of thing. But in plays or musicals that have more dialogue, like Mary Poppins, I'm jumping back and forth on each individual person line by line as they're talking to each other. Yeah, because, and also the fact of they go from talking to breaking the song, mm -hmm. then back to talking, and you have to adjust all those levels as well. Yes. Uh, up there next to you is a script, right? Well, it normally is a script. This show, it's actually a conductor's score. When you're doing a show like this, are you literally going through that as well? Yes, all 300-something pages of it. So you never look up pretty much during the show or you don't have the luxury uh, of looking up during a show? There are moments that are critical for me to look up and I'll actually have marked in the score to pay attention to what's happening on stage. Is it a visual cue that you're looking Sometimes, for? Sometimes, yes. Or it's uh, to pay attention to what the conductor's doing because I'm also watching a little monitor of the conductor. And then I also have three cue lights here from Rose, who's the stage manager, and she'll turn on these little lights. And that tells me when I can take a sound effect which I'm triggering off of a, a computer next to me. So uh, going back to that little screen in front of you, so you have a little uh, video screen right here. So obviously there's a camera on Tommy down there that you can watch That's right. throughout the entire show. It's obviously got some kind of you know red matting over it so yeah. that everybody can see it. I've uh, covered up any extra lights, anything that is a little bit too bright for an audience member behind me. And uh, this gel is one thing that I've done to adapt that monitor so it's nice and dim. I covered up this computer with another gel so that it's all dim and just trying to stay out of the way so people right next to me can enjoy the show. Now what people don't really take into account is, besides the fact of you've got this truly massive job to make every single production, every show sound as amazing as it can, but there are so many outside influences that the normal person wouldn't think about. For instance, you know, uh, Mary Poppins that we had houses that were sold out 1700 plus, and there were some nights that had eight or 900 people, which 
you know, you and I were talking before uh, off the air, and that has an effect on the sound, right? Or the mm -hmm. heat, or all those kind of things. Yeah, the humidity in the room, the temperature, uh, and just the general house count and all, can all affect the sound. Uh, it's more or less like a, a floor level of where we should be at that can kind of adjust depending on how much the room is absorbing the sound. Uh, for this show, it's pretty consistent because it's such a loud rock show. It's kind of hitting that that floor, and we don't really need to go below that because that's the design level floor. Right. I will say, I was sitting uh, right in these seats next to your board at opening night, mm -hmm. so I was enjoying the show, but I was equally as amazed of watching you, and I look and go, there's a dude who has nerves of steel because you can't get flustered in the middle yeah. of the show, right? You can't, Pretty you know. Much. You have to, similar with the musicians or actors, you know, if there's any kind of little flub or mistake, you have to just keep going. Don't take a moment to take it in. If anything, do a mental note about how to fix it for the next time, but you got to just truck right through it. And I will say, I was at the show on Saturday night. When we came back from Act 2, Mrs. Walker's mic seemed to have a problem at first with it. Yeah, battery died. Yeah, but like, she didn't look like she freaked. I kind of looked back at you. you. Everybody was just doing their job, and then all of a sudden, she was back up, everything's running and everything's smooth, just a part of, you know, live theater. Yeah, I try to pull up mics of people around her if possible, but uh, she left the stage for all of, you know, 12 seconds and Phil was able to change the batteries on it very What quickly. is the hardest thing about the job that you do? Uh, just really getting an idea of what people want to hear because uh, I'm just taking notes off paper Sometimes I have dynamic markings, sometimes I don't. And I really just gotta get an idea of what the show should sound like in this space and the show that we're doing. When we're at uh, Final Dress, Adam Rosenthal is the uh, sound designer. You guys, really, the first time everything comes together, for all intents and purposes, is that Final Dress yeah. for you to mix the show. And then, you know, the next couple of days, you guys are all working together, right? Mm -hmm. And so, it isn't as if, like, once you're here, you just set the levels, you can program it, it's good to go. It is nonstop for you every single performance, true? Yes, it's, it's perpetually changing, and I try to think that every performance is a better one than the last, and I'm constantly trying to improve on it as much as I can. So how does a guy decide, I'm going to do this for a living? Like, were you at home uh, recording your parents and, you know, mixing like a DJ or... What happens sometime in your career where you go, yeah, this is cool, I want to do this? Because you've really worked all over the place and had yeah. just an amazing amount of experience. Right? Uh, just staying in music my whole life and then accidentally stumbling into tech things. And Were you a musician a, before this or did you just... Yeah, I played uh, saxophones and basses, bass guitars, upright bass and orchestras, jazz bands, concert bands, marching bands, and then got into tech, was really doing the lights and building, but then in college realized no one was doing sound. Where'd and you I go to school? Knack for it, uh, the DePaul Theater School. Great theater school. Yeah. So you kind of moved over on that side in the sound. I did, and then just haven't been able to stop working in it ever since. And the funny part is, when you and I have talked before, you, for a guy who never graduated, you know, up to that point hadn't graduated yet, you were already working a ton yeah. at some great places with huge experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, American Girl and Goodman and Shakespeare and a couple of store pr storefront theaters around town. Yeah. So when you uh, get to opening night, do you go through pregame jitters or do you do it before even a show or is this like business as usual for you? It's pretty much business as usual. I've done a lot of opening nights at this point, so it's something that you kind of have to just know it's another audience uh, and then just keep going. What is the favorite thing about, uh, for you, what you do? The reactions of the audience. When they're applauding, you know, we're all getting energy from that, and I'm sitting in the heart of it, so it's definitely something I'm feeling. Cool. 
Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, when you see Tom before a show or after a show at intermission, feel free to pat him on the back and say hi. Once the show starts, please, by all means, do not touch him or talk to him. Don't try to buy him a beer because uh, he's got too much to do. And thank you, man. You are an integral part of every single show that we do here, and you're a wonderful part of that. And mm -hmm. it is amazing artistry what you do. So art's just not on that stage, but it's behind the stage as well, and this is a perfect example of it. So thanks, because we're in the middle of a matinee and evening performance. You're taking the time out before you guys go to dinner and stuff. So thanks for taking the time. Thanks for all your hard work, man. No problem. Thank you.